Hello, everyone. My name is Eric Brockman. I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Extreme Networks. We are a global provider of cloud-driven networking solutions. And today, what I'm going to talk with you about is how technology and the ecosystem of the cloud is coming to the enterprise. What we're seeing is this tsunami of change. The public, private, and hybrid cloud are all adopting technologies that originally were developed uh, by the hyperscale providers such as GCP, Azure, and AWS. So it's not just in the cloud anywhere er, anymore, but it's everywhere. To the right, I have a famous Japanese woodcut that was first published in 1829 uh, by Hokusai. And it depicts a very large storm wave uh, with Fuji in the background. Uh, it's, a, it's often thought of as a tsunami, and we equate tsunamis with large change after a tsunami comes through. And that is what's happening with the cloud. The cloud is all about simplification and automation. That's what's made the cloud so popular. And in particular, what's happened is that ML and AI, which have really taken root in the cloud and coming to the hybrid cloud, uh, are the basis of a coming transformation of networking. And in particular, the, the components uh, of ML and AI are gonna deliver networks that work day and night, essentially networks that run on autopilot, which is a true autonomous network and an autonomous network, which needs very little hands-on operation day to day. That is the goal of many enterprise networks. So let's start with reviewing a technology adoption cycle curve. You've all seen this before, the innovators, the early adopters, early majority, and so forth. And you've also always read about what's called the chasm and crossing the chasm from early adoption to early majority. And the question for many technologies are, are they gonna be niche products that are only for innovators and earlier adopters, or do they become adopted by a broad set of technologists? So in particular, the top cloud technology ecosystem adoption cycle, let's look at it something like this. AWS, Azure, and Google, when they began their cloud journeys, uh, a lot of companies and a lot of pundits said, hey, these companies are one of a kind and they don't really represent networking in general or the rest of the enterprise market. They're unicorns, they're one-offs. And these hyperscalers built their networks uh, leveraging automated software control. They began with deep analytics and visibility to understand the servers and the switches in their network and they moved the, uh, that visibility to ML and AI to further automate and simplify their networks. And they had a principle of keeping it simple and driving high resiliency. But what happened was the technologies that they were on the forefront of crossed the chasm and made it into the financial services business and transformed the nature of the clouds, the private clouds for financial services. And subsequently, those same techniques are now being adopted and used by service providers around the world for the, for the best new service provider networks. And at extreme networks, whether it's the access edge or the, or the campus network or the cloud itself, we're delivering cloud-based, cloud-driven enterprise networking for the rest of the enterprise adoption cycle. And Let's back that up a little bit and look at some of the technologies that are used in enterprise networking today uh, that were born in the cloud. So first and foremost, software and automation. 70% of all software runs on Linux in the cloud, and the biggest driver of the evolution of Linux has been cloud-based ecosystems. Containers and Kubernetes came from the cloud Many of the best languages, tool chains, CI, CD, all came from cl cloud native development. Hardware, whether it's processors, GPU accelerators, network switching chips, high-speed optics, 2550, 100, 400, 800 gig, 
all driven by cloud. And big data, ML, and AI, all the tools associated, all have also been driven by the cloud ecosystem. So the point here is that 20 years ago, we thought of enterprise networking coming from a small set of early uh, internet networking companies. But today, uh, enterprise networking technologies are born out of the cloud. And that's clearly the direction that extreme networks is going. But let's look at another phenomenon that's timely. Cloud technology adoption is gonna actually further accelerate following the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic. And let's explore three reasons that this is gonna happen. First of all, post-pandemic, cloud-based management and networks that can run on autopilot will become more in demand. And here's an example of three reasons why. First, there's been a sudden increase in the amount of work from home and Zoom workers everywhere around the world. And the best way to serve such a diverse uh, set of locations and users is really a cloud-based enterprise networking solution. And many companies will be accelerating their experimentation with cloud-based networking uh, over the next many months. And they were, they're going to see success with that. And they, when they get back to uh, a more new normal, uh, they will accelerate the adoption of cloud-based networking solutions. Second, the economic recovery that's, that's soon uh, going to start as the pandemic passes is gonna focus on delivering ever more automated networking. Because in the early days of the recovery, there's gonna be an incredibly strong focus on efficiency and simplicity, given what has just happened. And that's and one of the big advantages of a cloud-based solution is that it federates learning from many different customers uh, that are using the cloud, and then takes that feedback and improves the networking results for all customers based upon the learning uh, from, from a broad cross-section of the customers. Cloud feature sets also evolve and improve more rapidly. Uh, new releases often are in the cloud, new features every few weeks. As, the, as each of the enterprises tries and benefits from these new features, uh, it drives efficiency and ease of use of their network operations. And then thirdly, as a byproduct of so many people working from home, there's gonna be a tremendous increase uh, in investment in the core of the networks, in fiber, in fiber optics, in switching, uh, which is gonna improve the available bandwidth and at the same, same time, it will demonstrate the reliance uh, and reliability of the cloud. Uh, and therefore, and then on top of that, you're gonna see new 5G deployments accelerate Wi-Fi 6 and new 6E, which is being approved by the FCC April 23rd of this month. Uh, and those all will accelerate uh, the adoption of cloud-based management. And if you, if you need a little bit more proof, uh, this is a slide uh, adapted from the 650 Group uh, Market Intelligence Research Team. They just published this recently, and it demonstrates that, first of all, as you would expect, there's going to be an economic decline in the use of networking and other services across the economy in general uh, as the as economies slowly recover from uh, the pandemic. Uh, and their outlook is that cloud managed services over the next three years will grow by 13%, as outlined here in red, whereas classic enterprise networking uh, will be flat. And this is true not only as demonstrated here for wireless, but also wireless plus switching uh, in the enterprise space. So um, a, a very well-known researcher, you know, coming to the same conclusion that post COVID-19, uh, cloud-based management is going to accelerate and take market share. So extreme networks, where are we going? You know, at a high level, our purpose is to create effortless networking experiences that enable all of us to advance. And our brand promise, you know, we see a world where enterprise networking is all about autonomous and net effortless networking and advances the way we can connect and work and live, delivering progress like never before. And our goal, our mission is to be the industry's first cloud-driven end-to-end enterprise networking vendor. 
And to that end, we have our cloud, uh, which is a SaaS cloud. Uh, we can offer our cloud a, on as delivered for a private on a private cloud. We can deliver our cloud as a local cloud. So unlike others, we give uh, our customers choice. Secondly, we are delivering a family of tiered application services um, for managing and controlling a network with the future direction of delivering containers uh, that can deliver new software uh, on the infrastructure. Third, we're investing in our cloud in ML and AI uh, that deliver great analytics and enable autonomous networks. And fourth, we're delivering common hardware where the customer gets to choose the software that runs on the hardware. Further, when you think of cloud-driven networking, it, it's more than just centralized management. It's the visibility and analytics to get insights to the network and new automation tools that update constantly to improve the operational efficiency of the network. So let's give some examples. Just in the past few weeks, uh, Extreme has, these are th three examples, three simple examples where customers uh, in the need for speed have taken advantage of our cloud-based networking solutions to solve some real-time networking problems that they had. So one example is a small city in the state of Arizona, a city of only 40,000 people uh, that was badly hit by COVID-19. They needed the local city government leaders to be able to participate and run the city, uh, but not be coming to city hall to do it. Uh, so they purchased some of our equipment and within a day, we're able to bring up the mayor, the CFO, head of utilities, many of the other leaders that were mission critical so that they could work from home, run the city um, in, a, in a very simple way and be easy, easily supported by their IT team. We have another example of a healthcare system in the UK. They wanted to take their non-clinical staff and have them work from home. Uh, they bought 100 router kits to provide remote connectivity and literally in a day had everybody up and running uh, and uh, connected into the network um, in a very simple fashion. Uh, another example is we have a major healthcare customer uh, does over $4 billion of annual revenue in their healthcare system. Uh, they purchased our rapid outdoor connectivity kits. They use them for pop-up triage tents that were in the parking lots around some of their major medical centers so that they could do COVID-19 testing. Uh, and they were able to bring that up very quickly. Uh, and another tribute to the speed and simplicity of delivering cloud-based networking. So where are we right now as we look forward in the rest of 2020? We start with Extreme Cloud IQ, which is our user interface to uh, the, the network. And it began clearly with wireless and it provides a series of tabs for other types of services, whether it's a base set of pilot services or co-pilot services or autopilot services. Wireless is gonna extend from the current set of offerings to other offerings in our portfolio um, from other parts of our portfolio from uh, both on the Wing 7 side, as well as Identify. Uh, and this will make it possible for many of other legacy APs to participate in the cloud. In like fashion, our switching platforms will be able to be managed from the cloud. They will come out in stages and the new hardware that we will be delivering will allow you to choose the software that you run on your switch. For private cloud, we give our customers the option to be able to, to put our cloud on GCP or Azure or AWS, whichever three, whichever the three they choose if they want a private cloud deployment. And then we're heading down the direction of delivering applications as containers that can run on the infrastructure, both appliances and virtual appliances, as well as some of our switching equipment, and even in the future, access points. And let's give an example here. So from the cloud, you have a different a set of different application solution tabs that you're going to be able to purchase 
uh, depending upon the sophistication of the net network you want to build and you want to manage. And at the same time, you're going to have the option of having edge computing applications, which will be deployed and run as containers on the infrastructure. And again, as I mentioned earlier, that'll be on appliances or virtual appliances uh, on some of our switching equipment and in the future, some of our access points. And this will give, will allow us to deliver a truly autonomous autopilot, autopiloted network. So in closing, one of the things we talked about is that um, the cloud technologies are really driving the future and transforming networking. And they have transitioned from the cloud to financial services, to service providers, and now are beginning to be adopted across the enterprise. We talked about the fact that enterprise networking is moving to a cloud managed and cloud driven paradigm uh, because it's just far more efficient for to have federated learning from the cloud and apply ML and AI to ultimately deliver a network that runs on autopilot. We discussed the fact that some of the leading industry pundits and forecasters, such as the 650 group, um, as well as gave examples that post pandemic cloud managed networking is going to accelerate in its rate of adoption and classic on premise managed networking um, will will be will have flat uh, to no growth. And last, uh, Extreme is delivering on the vision of an autonomous cloud driven enterprise networking solution with hardware cloud and software choice. Thank you very much for listening today. Uh, this last photo is from the island of Miyajima from a trip I took in December. Uh, and it just made me think of advance with us. So thank you very much. Very much appreciate you listening to us today. I hope you and your family are safe in this pandemic and we all look forward to getting back to work. Thank you so much.